In this video, we are going to go over the important AWS services you should learn for your cloud interview as well as the job. Instead of just going through a list of services, what we are going to do, like true solutions architects we are, I'm going to draw some real world applications and trends, work backwards from it and map AWS services to those applications so that you understand what AWS service is used at what part of the application and it's easier to remember, easier to study and say in interview. Let's get started. Okay, so in the heart of it all is application. In any application, there is some business logic and the business logic is running in some sort of code. So to run this application, you need a server. This server is gonna run on a data center because recent study proved that 85% of the workload are still on premises. So the first set of AWS services you need to know for interview is how to migrate these servers to AWS. So I'll call this DC or data center. So the first service that you need to know is ADS or application discovery service it gathers the information of what servers are running, including databases. And we're gonna come to that part in a minute. And then the next service you need to master is AWS MGN or application migration service. Now, after ADS discovers everything, MGNs can migrate on-premises server to AWS server, which is EC2. So this side is AWS. So this is your application code and this is running in EC2. And this is also called virtual machine. Now, one thing that is not available in data center but available on the cloud is auto scaling. As more users start using your application, your virtual machine needs to scale. So you also have to study auto scaling group. But let's face it. EC2 and auto scaling group is old news now. If someone asks you in an interview, hey, how are you going to scale? How are you going to run? You know EC2 auto scaling group. Your friend knows EC2 auto scaling group. His girlfriend knows EC2 auto scaling group. His crush knows EC2 auto scaling group. So you need to set yourself apart. So in addition to studying EC2, you need to know at least one of these. Kubernetes, EKS, Elastic Kubernetes service, or if Kubernetes you do not like, serverless. And for serverless compute, the service is Lambda. So learning EC2 and auto scaling group is not enough anymore. Interviewers expect you to know at least either Kubernetes or serverless. If you want to know more tips and tricks like this that comes in the cloud interview, along with the study tips, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. As a welcome gift, you get to download this beautiful PDF with many different cloud question answer with the study notes. Sign up for free at cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. I'll give the link in the description. Now back to the video. Going back to the data center, in addition to running the code, you also need to save some information. For example, Amazon needs to save what's in your shopping cart, what's the price of the product, what have you purchased, etc. You need to have database, right? So in your uh, data center, so I'm going to extend this a little bit, you also need to have some sort of database. So I'll call this DB, okay? And your application code is gonna be interacting with it. This database is running on premises, you need to migrate it. So to migrate that, you need to learn this service called DMS, or database migration service. Thing to keep in mind, ADS discovers both the servers and database. MGN just replicates the server with the hard disk. Hard disk is the EBS, and then the database is replicated through DMS. So this database comes to AWS. You need to know at least one SQL and one NoSQL database. For the SQL side, I recommend learning RDS. For NoSQL, I recommend learning DynamoDB. And DynamoDB also goes very well with serverless. In addition to just saving uh, information in a database, there could be some other kind of things that you need to store. 
YouTube, you need to store the thumbnail, the video, Amazon.com, uh, the picture of the products, etc. So database is not good for storing those because they, they take a lot of space. So for that, you need to use something like S3 bucket. Okay, so that's the next AWS service you need to master. All right, so at this point, our application is up and running. So now let's take a look at this traffic. So in real world applications, no one is allowed to access your virtual machine or your server in that matter directly, right? Because this EC2 will have an IP address. You don't want to expose that IP address. Also, this EC2 can die, new EC2s come up, they will be scaled. So you need a way to accept the traffic and distribute the traffic. Okay, so for that, I'm going to write traffic gateway. And in this layer, you need to learn application load balancer, network load balancer, and API gateway. What they are, what's the differences, when to use what. So I have a separate video on that. Look that up if you want. So at this point, we have created a very, very popular architecture, which is a microservice architecture. You, the user, sending traffic using application load balancer, application load balancer sending traffic to EC2, or Lambda going to database, sending your reply back. Now, another kind of architecture is becoming very popular these days is event-driven architecture, which brings me to the next layer of AWS services. So the transaction still comes through traffic gateway, no change there. Here, you add additional layer, we'll call it eventing. And for eventing, you need to learn SQS, or Amazon Simple Queue Service, SNS, Simple Notification Service, and Event Bridge. I also have a separate video made for 2024 uh, features comparing all the differences, all the stuff. I'll give the link up top, so take a look if interested. There's also another kind of architecture which is uh, popular in real world, workflows. So this is like step-by-step sequential and conditional workflow system. So to do that, we use a AWS service called step function. So I'm just going to put it here. So learn this service as well, because this service also unlocks a lot of the workloads. So at this point, we understand different kinds of applications and what AWS services can be used to create those. But it's not done though, right? Because this is just the bare minimum. In real world, you need to monitor how your application is doing, which brings us to the next layer of AWS services. So there are two important observability solutions. One is CloudTrail. So CloudTrail logs all the infrastructure logs, but then there is also application logs, application performance metrics. Those are captured in CloudWatch. So let's say your application logs is sent to CloudWatch, and then if there is an error, you can also create an alert from the CloudWatch and notify support folks. CloudWatch also gets the information from this EC2 and get the utilization metrics that, okay, how much it is used, uh, what is the uh, CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, etc. I'm just giving an example with the EC2. CloudWatch and CloudTrail both is integrated with all the layers, this traffic gateway layer, eventing layer, server layer, EKS, EC2, database, everything. So you definitely need to uh, learn those. Now the next tier of services is what makes a difference between an average candidate and a great candidate, security. With this architecture, whoever has the URL of this traffic gateway can simply call, but that's not how real world works, is it? With Amazon.com, you need to log in. YouTube, you need to log in. So you need to learn at least these security services. First is Cognito, which is used for authentication and authorization. Next, you need to encrypt the data at rest. So this database or the hard disk tied to the EC2, and there is a reason I did not put EBS. EBS is the hard disk associated with EC2 because that doesn't come up much in the interview because most of the data is stored on the database, okay? So then you need to learn KMS, at least the fundamentals. You don't need to know the inner workings of KMS. And the next service that you need to understand is IAM, Identity and Access Management. I'm just going to put a lock 
of the services so that you know they are security services because they are important. They are little special, so they get their little uh, icon. Now, security is an important area. So these three are the bare minimum. But if you want to go to the next level, then you please also study these following ones. Web Application Firewall or WAF, Shield, Guide Duty, and Secrets Manager. And they're easy, like you don't need to spend a lot of time on those, but if you can get an understanding of those, that will be very, very helpful. So at this point, our application is running, we are monitoring, we secured it. What's the next big thing that comes in people's mind next? Cost, right? So you need to know the AWS services that can help you track cost and also optimize cost. I'm just going to put them here, like dollar, dollar, because cost, you need to learn compute optimizer. So I'm just going to put the shorthand and this compute optimizer actually integrates with CloudWatch because remember, CloudWatch has the performance metrics, the utilization metrics. Compute Optimizer can use those CloudWatch metrics and recommend you how to save money. And in addition, you also need to know spot instances, reserved instances, and instance saving plan. Now in real world, all this stuff that we are doing, you are not gonna go in the console and then just create all this stuff because then that's time consuming. You cannot really reproduce it in another account easily. It is error prone. So. How do you solve that? You solve that by adapting infrastructure as code. You need to know at least one infrastructure as code. The AWS's native infrastructure as code is CFT or CloudFormation. So if you do not know any infrastructure as code, you can learn CloudFormation. But if you already know one such as Terraform, then this is optional. You don't need to know that. No discussion goes without mentioning GenAI. Right? So how do you integrate Gen AI? So one way could be whatever data you are getting, Gen AI can analyze it and tell you how to grow your business, etc., etc. So for Gen AI, you need to know at least two AWS service. One is Bedrock. You should also run Amazon Q. So Amazon Q is getting more popular. Where Q you can think of as like Amazon's ChatGPT. You can ask a question about AWS services or it is also helping you to troubleshoot, it will give you answer. But now keep in mind, this is for general essay. If you are going for machine learning specific positions, then you also need to know SageMaker. All right, networking. When you are running your application in data center, this whole data center is yours, right? Like you own it, you own all the IP addresses, etc. But when you are running this in AWS, AWS is also running in a data center and multiple customers are using that data center. So you need to have a chunk of IP address or a piece of the data center that you can control. We call that VPC or virtual private cloud. So you need to understand how do you allocate IP addresses in a VPC, what are the subnet, what is availability zone, how can this application load balancer NLB API gateway tied to a specific VPC subnets? How can you provision EC2s in specific subnets? How does traffic comes in from internet to these EC2s? Should you allow it? How do you allow it, etc.? So you need to study VPC concepts as well as AWS global infrastructure. If you feel overwhelmed, feel free to check out my AWS for a beginner's course. I go over all these services along with their use cases, differences, etc. Maximum discounted link in the description. All right, folks, good luck on your AWS journey. Keep learning and keep rocking.